In this episode, we load up the kayaks on a ponga and head to the Lump, an area where the depth comes up from 300 feet to 30 feet that's notorious for big fish. The yellowfin are chewing, but I make a stubborn decision that cost me what could have been an epic day. And uh, it didn't work. Then, on our final day, I have one fish on my mind, roosterfish. With just hours left before it's time to go home, I finally get a shot at this bucket list species. The rooster! The question is, can I land it? You don't look like you took very good. Come here, no, no, no. So this is why they call it a rainforest. So it's my day to go to the lump and of course uh, storm drill hard last night and it's still raining today uh, Luckily just let off in about the last five minutes. So uh, hoping it lets off But we're gonna get the kayaks down load them up in the panga and head out to this money spot Hopefully I do as well as Christina did yesterday We're basically driving right into a storm Not exactly ideal conditions out here, but we're gonna make the best of it. There's lightning all around us. Uh, we forgot our VHF radio, so if that help boat gets too far, uh, they're not gonna know if we get into trouble. So hopefully we don't die. And I guess it'd be nice if we got some fish too. <laughs> all of a sudden, the humpbacks begin surfacing all around us. It was more than a little eerie being surrounded by these massive animals while lightning struck in every direction. It's so cool, you can hear these whales underwater. That's how loud they are. I'm a little nervous now. Pretty close to where they were. Man, that's a big animal. I want to get close, but not too close. It didn't take long before Benton was hooked up. Oh, no, it's a... Uh, is that a Trevally? Oh, it's... Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, that's cool, though. I think this is what they call a uh, big eye trevally. Uh, yeah. Before long, the rain let up and I began working on catching bait. Yeah, I'm gonna throw out my, my bait rig. See if I can't pick up one of these bonita and get it out. We got a school of bonita here. There we go, hooked up. Get this guy in, get him on the live bait rig and get him out. Popper has not been productive this morning like it has the other mornings, so maybe they want live bait today. Oh yeah, it's decent size too. Oh, they're strong. <laughs> Man, screw bass fishing. Just come out here and catch bait. Come on, get up. I can't let this guy fight too long or I'm gonna end up killing him, but this is my, you know, it's just a bait rod, so it's not heavy, hard to muscle him in. These things, you know, they're not big, but they're strong. They're built just like tuna. And uh, they're not to be taken lightly. I gotta hurry, get him back in the water, or he's not gonna live. You know what, this guy's not gonna live anyways. He's acting pretty lively. Well, he's alive for right now, I don't know how long it lasts, but uh, while he's alive, I'm going to take advantage see if we can't hook up with something decent size. That's a big bait, so if something takes it, it's going to be a big fish. So when you're fishing offshore with live bait, you always want to have a really loose drag. I mean, you got to assume that when they take that fish, they're going to you know, know that it's a real fish, so they're going to hang on to it. And that way, if they short strike it and miss your hook, they might, it gives them a chance to gobble it up and uh, hopefully get your hook in their mouth. Uh, otherwise, they could easily just pull that bait off the hook if your drag's set too tight. But he's still alive for right now, so hopefully we get bit. There's more up here. I'm gonna try to catch another one. Uh, use that for cut bait later. Didn't take long. About three seconds after I hit the water. I'm trying to burn it because it keeps swallowing that treble is what's killing them. Mm, man, they're strong. Oh, 
All right, gotta be quick, gotta be quick. That was relatively quick, maybe he'll survive, unlike the last two. So on the bus ride down here, they warned us about uh, some kind of snake that's got a yellow belly. Uh, they say that it's deadly, it's venomous, and it lives out here in the ocean, and just kind of floats along the surface. There's one of these snakes right here. These snakes are everywhere. But Benton and I have now seen two of them, and uh, getting bit by one of those would definitely end the trip, uh, and possibly a lot more. So um, my head is basically on a swivel come out in the middle of the ocean and get killed by a snake. I don't want that on my tombstone. <laughs> Ben's got a bonita on and while he's fighting the bonita, he saw one of these snakes. Right there. They're all over out here. Yeah, I'm not getting any closer to take a look. Yeah, I appreciate that because I want to get see his head come up. Yep, there he is. Come offshore, not worry about sharks or whales jumping on you, you worry about damn snakes. They're everywhere. While I work to keep my bait alive while dodging the snakes, Benton has discovered that the popper bite has turned on for the tuna. Nice fish. A fish on on the popper. Yeah, I don't think that's a bonita. <laughs> Ben Parrot's got a second tune of the day. Not as big as his first, but they're out here mixing with these Bonita. Uh, I can't see him to execute right now, but uh, Ben's getting on them. So uh, they're blowing up all over. Let's get back to it. Let's do it. We got birds jumping over there. Ben Parrot got a third yellowfin in the boat. Nice fish, dude. That's three? Yeah, he just came ahead on top. There were several together. I saw him jumping out of the water. Benton double fist in here in Panama. Because I got a yellowfin yesterday, I'm taking the risk of ignoring them today in hopes of getting something else. I'm wanting to keep this live bait out because that's what uh that's what I might catch a rooster fish on or a big cubera snapper. Uh, they could both hit the popper also, but uh, I just don't want to waste this bait. My stubbornness isn't paying off, as nothing's hitting my live bait. Now I've missed out on the best part of the elephant bite, and I finally decide to give in and try to get one. Fish on! A fish on on the popper! <sighs> Looked like a school of Anita, but I don't know. There's been yellow fin mixed in with them, so could be one of those. Uh. Yeah, I don't think that's a bonita. It's <laughs> a little yellow fin. There he is. <laughs> and the bluer popped out. <laughs> that worked out. <laughs> well, I've been trolling live and eat all day, trying to get a rooster fish or big cabara snapper. Uh, all the while, Ben over here has been just tearing up the elephant. Finally, the Benita died, and I said, screw it. Tied on popper, like he said. And sure enough, about five minutes later, we got a yellow fin. No monster, but they're all over out here. Ben's already got five, so uh, we're gonna keep tossing this till it's time to go. See if we can't get a few more to the boat. It's a fun fight. They make some crazy runs. As fate would have it, the bite died right after that fish. Well, today was a good learning experience. I went up to the lump and I was just dead set on catching rooster fish or cabera snapper. So 
Uh, even though Ben was out there catching yellowfin tuna all day, I just stuck to what I thought would work and uh, it didn't work. It was a good learning lesson, good reminder that, you know, sometimes you just got to accept what the fishery is giving you, you know, catch what's biting instead of trying to force something that's not there. You know, kind of disappointing day, but I mean, I caught another yellowfin tuna, had a great day offshore and we got one more day tomorrow and Christina Weber caught her first rooster fish today. So it sounds like they're coming in here in front of the resort. So we we'll get out there tomorrow, see if we can't get on them. But in the meantime, I hear that some of the locals are over here there at McDonald playing beer pong. A little throwback to my college days. I'm gonna go challenge these guys. <laughs> Always watching, bro. <laughs> Gringos, man, they'll cheat. Hey, boy. Sleeping off my hangover, Jay Morey went out and caught some blue runners using a sabiki rig. He said he'd give me one this morning, see if we can't get some rooster fish or something on them. All right, got that blue runner out. I'm gonna head straight for the rocks. That's where they were finding some rooster fish yesterday. Hopefully, we can get lucky and get bit. I really want to catch one, and today's the last day, so I'm gonna fish hard. That's all I can do. Fish on first drop with the jig. Oh, some decent too. Problem is I got this live bait out still. I don't want this to, to get hung up. Yeah, go that way. That's the way I want it to go. Very first drop with the jig. Oh man, I know that Eric and Matt caught a rooster fish out here. Oh, that would be killer if that's what this is, but I'm not gonna get my hopes up on that yet. Just need to keep it out of this live bait line or this is going to get messy in a hurry. So I'm kind of pedaling to keep that line behind me taut. Uh, who knows, this could be a bonita, could be a Sierra mackerel. Could be a lot of things that will hit that jig, so you never really know. Ah, uh, even worse, it's another jack of all. I'll take a fish first drop of the day. Always a good start. Nice, nice fun fight. Like I said, first drop on the jig, can't complain about anything, catching it on first drop. I know Eric and Matt caught rooster fish out here uh, to the left of these rocks. No one else has really been fishing out here all week. You know, maybe there's a lot of fish hanging out here. I mean, that's a good sign uh, to drop the jig one time and get bit. So let's let this guy go. He's not what I'm looking for. And uh, I'll keep trolling this live bait and throwing the jig down. See if I can't pull up something a little more worthwhile. Tangled. Whew. Nice. A little Sierra Macro on the jig. Oh. Fish on again. I was about to start talking about that. And I got another one on. Just got done landing that little Sierra mackerel. And uh, got another fish to just hit that live blue runner. I got a feeling, I mean, these fish school probably another Sierra mackerel, honestly. It's got a little fight to him. Oh, oh, wow. He's got some decent fight to him. Might be a bigger Sierra, we'll see. I don't like this hook swing. Oh my God. Might be a bigger fish than I realized. Uh, yeah, it's definitely bigger than this last fish. Oof. 
It's got a head shakes, could be a shark, could be a big bonita. That's the exciting thing about the ocean, really. It could be just about anything. Oh, I see it. Looks like another jack. Not what I was hoping for. At least it's fishy out here. That's three fish I've caught in about 10 minutes since I got over here. And uh, still early in the morning. All right, let's see if I can get this guy up. Let him go. I'm gonna keep this here mackerel that actually good eating, which is what I was about to talk about until this guy hit. All right, another nice jack. I mean, always a fun fight, but uh, you know, I didn't come all the way to Panama to catch jack. So let's let this guy go and handle this here mackerel I just caught. Off he goes. All right, so what I was about to say about this guy is it looks a lot like a Spanish mackerel. Uh, they have the yellow spots, much like a Spanish mackerel, but this is actually a different fish. It's called a Sierra mackerel. The biggest difference between this and Spanish mackerel and king mackerel is that these guys actually taste good. So uh, this is pretty good eating size and uh, we'll probably grill him up tonight. Let's put him in the bicycle cooler, keep him fresh. Get back to fishing. Looks like he's come alive around here. I'm gonna keep jigging and uh, see if I can't catch another bait too. Whew, fun morning so far. Fish out! Oh God, I'm so worn out after five days. Got a feeling this is another jack. It's kind of got head shakes like jacks tend to do. Hopefully I'm wrong. It's fighting good though. Jig's working today. Third fish I've caught on so far. I left that first area I was in because I was catching just jacks and wanted to see if me, you know, get out of that school of them. And it looks like, it's like that's exactly what I've got again. That one's pretty big. Now that's a fish. Look at this guy. Oh my God. Heavy. Massive jack. He just inhaled the vertical jig. Uh, it's the third one I've caught today. By far the biggest one I've caught today. See if we can't weed through him and get something better. Still looking for that rooster. And he swallowed this pretty good too. All right. Let's get him back in the water quick. I accidentally dropped the jig down and now I'm hooked up. Oh man, that other one's not gonna survive. He just got hooked too deep. Uh, and I guarantee you this is another jack. I gotta be in a school of them. Uh, I need to go get, oh my gosh. That is too funny. I just threw my jig in the water, trying to get the fish revived and back in. Decided, hey, why not jig it on the way back up when I realized I accidentally dropped it and sure enough, I got hit. And I'm sure this is just another, it's a rooster, it's a rooster, yeah, <laughs> oh my gosh, no way, it's a rooster, yeah, it's a rooster, no way, I cannot believe that, I literally accidentally dropped my jig down and that's how I get the fish I've been looking for. Look at it. Oh. oh my God, I gotta get this guy in quick before I lose it. He doesn't look like he's hooked very good. Oh no, oh no. Come here, no, no, no. Oh no. Oh man, what a strong run. Oh, he's not hooked good at all. And he's not cooperating. I just gotta get him in the boat. Ah. Yeah! Yes! Yeah! Woo! Oh my gosh, it's a nice one. Maybe 18 pounds. Oh yeah. Rooster on the vertical jig. Oh, what a gnarly looking animal. That is what I came here for. And finally, on the last day of the trip, after things not going that smoothly, and sure enough, got my rooster. Oh my God. Here we are in Panama with deep blue kayak fishing. They promised us some epic fish, yellowfin tuna, and now I got my rooster. What a trip. 
So Eric says the best way to revive these fish is to literally torpedo them, plunge them down in the water real hard. She may come back up once or twice, but if we keep doing that, she should come back. There she goes. What an incredible catch. After a few days of, of struggles, I can't tell you how amazing that feels. Oh man, what a week. Talk about an emotional roller coaster. First day, just totally struggled. Couldn't really get anything good in the boat. Feeling really down, feeling frustrated, a little discouraged. And then day two, got my yellowfin tuna. Knocked off one of my top species on my bucket list ever. Then day three, I mean, I'm on cloud nine. Went out with a game plan, stuck to it way longer than I should have. Ended up with kind of a bust of a day. I mean, I got another yellowfin, but it was a small one. And you know, I could have caught nine or 10 yellowfin probably if I had really just committed to it. Feeling low, get up this morning, not much hope for my last day here. Early on, just start hooking up with fish left and right. And then I got my rooster fish, which was probably the top species that I wanted to catch here. So it was just a week of highs and lows, but in the end, I did what I came here to do, and I'll have these experiences and memories for the rest of my life. This is an incredible place, and I cannot wait to come back. And huge thanks to Los Buzos Resort, Morris and his wife, Terry, they have been extremely accommodating. This place is incredible. Uh, cannot thank them enough for showing us such a great time this week. We head back tomorrow and I am already dreading it. 